everybody, welcome back to Tim Travels. It's Terry, your host, coming to you from uh, exit one in Virginia on I-77 at the Loves. We, um, we're on our way down to McDonough, Georgia. Brittany's making herself some chili cheese fries for dinner. Um, so, today was an interesting day. We didn't drive that far. I take it back, including the shift before I took my 10 hours. About 400 miles today. But, um, so we, we drove through the Shenandoah and up over Fancy Gap. And before I left, though, I'd been getting these, um, getting these emails that my checking account was overdrawn. Now, this is a checking account that my wife had me open when I was on home time last time. And, and I'll tell you the bank in a minute. So I go in, I open the check, you know, I, I got some cash. I'm like, hey, I need to open a new checking account. So they're like, okay. So um, I said, hey, how much do, you, do I need to put in? They said, uh, you know, a hundred bucks if you got it. I said, how about how about sixty? They're like, okay, fine. You know how they do. So I put, so I give him sixty bucks. But then when he sees my birth date, you know, because he's looking at my license, he's like, oh, well, you're over fifty or fifty-five. You can qualify for this senior citizens checking I'm like and basically senior citizens checking if you have an ACH deposit um, they don't charge you any fees and there's no cost for checking or whatever and I was just gonna set up payroll on ACH from the entity that leases the truck so I put the 60 bucks in but then I you know, I didn't have any checks. I didn't have any debit card because I went back on the road. So when I saw my wife the other day, she brought me the checks in a sealed envelope and she brought me the ATM card in a sealed envelope. <coughs> Excuse me. So I activated the ATM card and when I was in Pittston, I tried to get some cash because I wanted to buy, <coughs> excuse me, I wanted to buy a couple of things at the, the store at the terminal. Well, it said I had insufficient funds. Now, I had already gotten one of these notices, and I was like, what the hell, this must be a mistake, right? Because I didn't even know the account number, honestly. I left all the paperwork at home. And the idea of this account was just for that to be my running money while I'm out on the road. So, I, um, I call them up and I realize that the last four digits on the account that they're sending me these emails about is what's on the checks. But mind you, haven't written any checks, haven't used the debit card except once to get rejected basically. So I call them up and they're like, yeah, um, well you wrote a check for $100 and that overdrafted your account. I'm like, no I didn't. I didn't have any checks. I didn't have a debit card, I didn't have anything. They're like, well, this check, and, and I'm not supposed to tell you who it was written to or any all any of the particulars, but it was it was an imprinted check, meaning it, the, you know, like the checks you get from the check printing company, like with your name, address, etc. And I'm like, how would anybody get an imprint check with my account number on it unless it was like an inside job? And you know, and then the guy and, and the the bank is bb and t the guy at bb and t was like okay well, let me read you these disclaimers and you know he asked me all these questions that i had already answered kind of like cops do and so i um so i answer all these questions and there's like well we will be sending you several different sets of paperwork and you'll have to return that paperwork some of which will need to be notarized within 10 business days or your claim will be disallowed blah blah, blah. I'm like, dude, I already told you that I'm an over-the-road trucker. That's why I didn't even have this stuff with me. I said, now, so somebody stole my money, and then you piled on with a bunch of fees, and now you're telling me that, the, that I have to do the heavy lifting. 
And I said, well, I at least want to close the account because obviously somebody has my account number. Oh, we can't close the account because, um, yeah, there's a negative balance. I'm like, negative balance? And, you know, I'm like, it, it, it was just crazy. It was just crazy. And I, <laughs> I felt like telling my wife, I said, you know, see, just give me cash. Just give me ca I don't want to deal with banks. As I get older, I'm getting more suspicious, I guess. So anyway, that was the first part of the day. But we did something today. I taught my daughter something. She didn't want to learn it, but I made her. I made her put her phone down. And I'll tell you what book she was learning from. Brittany, what book were you learning from? Hmm? Tell everybody in YouTube land, what book were you learning from? An atlas. Yeah, the Deluxe Motor Carrier's Road Atlas. It was that, boring. It was boring, but you learned something, right? It was still boring. She says it was boring, but, but I, I said, okay, you're going to find us a route using this book to get to our 90, which is in McDonough, Georgia. So guess what she had? All she had to work with is the name of the town. And I said, well, you can get a map, you know, it's in Georgia, you can get a map out of Georgia and just like search, oh, you know, kind of, you know, basically pour over it and hope you find it. Or you can go to the index and then get the grid coordinates and use the grid. And so I taught her how to do all that stuff. I taught her about interstates, like odd numbered interstates run north and south, even though they don't really necessarily run, are not directly north or directly south. Even numbered, east and west. If the mile markers are getting lower in number, that means you're either headed south or west. But if you know the, if you know the interstate number, you will know whether it's south or west. And you will know that when that mile marker gets to zero, you're either at a state border or you're at the end of that interstate. So, you know, she got to learn some stuff today. She learned that there are more than one way, because, you know, we looked at, she found McDonough, she looked at the Atlanta area. Okay, these are all the major interstates coming into Atlanta, right? She identified four of them. And so I said, okay, let's figure out how to get to one of those interstates that we know takes us where, close to where we want to be. And she, she looked up where we were in Virginia on 81, found some routes. So that was pretty cool. Um, I bet a lot of people don't know how to do that, especially a lot of 12 year olds. Um, and yeah, so we did some geography and you know, she got to see, uh, Piedmont and how it sweeps out into the coastal plain from the top of Fancy Gap since we came over. And uh, yeah, that was our day. So tomorrow we'll get up early. Um, I am not waking up early. Yeah, you are. No, I'm not. Yeah, you are. Because you're at least going to get out of that top bunk when, when I get down the road in the morning. And we'll get this delivered. We we got a window from noon till midnight tomorrow to deliver. So we'll probably deliver early and then see what we can get out of the hot Atlanta area. Um, yeah, and that's just about it. But I can't believe an account that I have never done a transaction on. I got this is really the first time I've. Well, I take it back. I've had. I've had people use credit and debit cards, but never somebody write a check, especially on an account that I had, I had never written a check on or never used at all. So, but like I said, I think it was an inside job. We'll find out. Anyway, uh, be safe, <clears throat> um, be good, and we will talk to you soon. Bye.